Welcome to Bible Tract Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracts Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracts, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracts Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracts and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world, and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracts will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. Hello, my friend. Welcome to the Wednesday edition here at Bible Track Echoes. Thanks for joining us right now. My Bible is sitting open to 1 John and chapter 1. 1 John 1, if it's possible right now, reach over, pick up your own copy of the Word of God and join me there. 1 John chapter 1, get something on which you can jot some notes. I've got a gospel track in my hand. Surprise, surprise. Bible Track Echoes is the radio arm of a larger ministry called Bible Tracks Incorporated, and we have been publishing and giving away free of charge gospel tracts all over the world. Let me ask you, friend, do you use gospel tracts? Do you know what a gospel tract is? A gospel tract is simply a short written presentation of God's plan of salvation. And thousands upon thousands of people every year come to Christ after receiving a gospel track, reading it, often rereading it, passing it along. Friend, I want to help you be a gospel teller and extend your gospel witness. I want you to be a partner with me in doing gospel work. Hang on, I want to encourage you to get some gospel tracks from us. I'll say more about that here in just a moment. But let me lead into our Bible study time this way. Tell me, if you were writing a letter to some young believers, let's say these believers are your teenage grandchildren, and the purpose of your letter was to teach them about the Lord, what would be the first truth about God you would put in your letter? I'm asking that question because, in essence, that's the kind of letter we have opened before us here in the book of 1 John. The apostle John, the aged apostle John, was writing, writing to believers he loves. He's writing to them what he has seen, heard, and personally touched concerning the person of God. John had had a personal and very tender relationship with Jesus. He's writing to declare what he has learned and experienced. So what's the first thing John writes about? Is it about the love of God seen in Jesus? Is it about the uh, old forgiveness of God? Now, friend, these two things come along quite early in the book of 1 John, but they're not first. Get your Bible and let's see what the Holy Spirit puts first through John's pen here in the book of 1 John. As you're getting your Bible open and a pen handy for taking notes, I have that gospel tract in my hand. Now, the word tract is spelled T-R-A-C-T. Again, it's a short written presentation of God's plan of salvation. I want to give you a complete sample packet containing one each of all of our English gospel tracts. There's over 40 tracts in the sample packet. One of them is this one. It's entitled Coupon Faith with a question mark. This track was one I wrote after my wife and I were in a grocery store. We watched a lady get about $70 worth of food without paying any more than 20 bucks. Why? She used a boatload of coupons. She trusted those coupons. And in this track, we asked, you'll find that I asked her some series of questions about what she knew about the company that put out the coupons, and she knew nothing at all. She just knew that coupons worked. She had faith in the words of those coupons. We build from there in putting faith in the Word of God and the truth that explains that the worst of earth's sinners can be saved out of the pit of hell, be made clean through the blood of Christ, and be declared a child of God, be declared holy in God's sight, and be ready and fitted for heaven by the work of Jesus Christ. It's a great, great gospel tool. It's a great ladies' gospel tract. Friend, listen, at the end of the broadcast, my announcer will come back on. He'll be giving you three ways by which you can contact us. Have your pen ready. Jot down the way that works best for you. You can go to our website, which is Bible 
tracksinc.org. You know how to spell Bible. The word tracks, I spell, it's got an S on it. Uh, then the word ink, I-N-C, BibleTracksInc.org. Get that sample packet. It's free. Get it today. If your Bible's open to 1 John, beginning at verse 5, here's what the Bible says. This then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you, that God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Let me just stop right there for today's sake. On Monday in the broadcast, we began looking at these verses, verses 5 through 10. I said then that I'm coming to these verses because they form a critical, a foundational passage on living the Christian life. It's a passage that every believer needs to get a hold of. And at this point, I need to clearly state why. Why are these six verses so foundational to our daily walk with God? There's two basic reasons. Reason number one is this. These verses give us the basis of our daily walk with God. Now, the opening four verses tell us, we saw this on Monday, that John is writing to help us have fellowship with the Father and with the apostles. That's in verse 3. In a moment, we're going to be looking at verse 5, but there we're going to see that our fellowship or our relationship with God and others is based on God's holiness. John does not say our relationship is based on God's love or God's forgiveness or anything else. Our fellowship with God and with others, other believers, is based on the character trait of holiness. Then reason number two why these are so foundational. These six verses, five through 10, are fundamental because they tell us the things that we as believers can say to ourselves that will mess up this holiness-based relationship with God and with one another. If your Bible is open there to 1 John 1, you will see that verse 4, verse 8, and verse 10 all begin with these three words, if we say three false statements are going to be listed here. If you and I believe any of these three false statements, then we are going to have a messed up relationship with God and a messed up relationship with fellow believers. You know I like to alliterate my studies, so here we go. Here's two words, both beginning with the letter F, like in the word Frank. They're going to help me here. My key word based upon verse 5 is this. It's the word foundation foundation. Verse 5 gives us the foundation of our relationship. And then verses 6 through 10 give us the falseness, the fallacies. There's even a better word, the fallacies that will wreck our relationship. All right, look at verse 5. The foundation. What is the foundation of our relationship, our fellowship with God and with others? Well, it is this. God is holy. Now, verse 5 makes two assertions. Both make the same point. It's just that one makes the point from a positive statement, the other from a negative statement. Now, the word holiness is not there, but here's the positive statement. It says this in verse 5, God is light. He said, this is the message I've got to give to you. God is light. Then verse 5 goes on to give the negative side. In him, in God, is no darkness at all, none whatsoever. Now, remember, what John is writing here is based upon his personal time as a disciple, as a learner with Jesus. The readers of his book, the first readers of this book, of the book of 1 John, they never had the opportunity to walk with Jesus in person and to be taught directly from him. So, John writes to tell them what Jesus taught the disciples, and the people refer to here in the, with the pronoun we, those are the apostles. You and I are also learning what Jesus taught. John got his teaching directly from Jesus, from the primary source. His readers, the first readers, were getting it secondhand. But, but, but wait. 
and this is really key, get this, because John wrote down this teaching, you and I in the year 2018 are getting our truth from an eyewitness account, from a primary source person. Some say the Bible, you can't trust it because, well, the Bible was handed down generation to generation by word of mouth. Friend, nothing could be farther from the truth. The apostles learned from Jesus. That's fact number one. But fact number two is this. It's based upon the teaching of John chapter 13, verse 26, John 13, 26, there Jesus says these words, the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you, talking about the apostles, he will teach you all things, and listen now, bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you, end quote. So fact one, John learned directly from Jesus. Fact two, John told the first century believers what he learned by means of the Holy Spirit helping him remember. And fact number three, the Holy Spirit moved John to write down and the Holy Spirit inspired the writings of the apostles, John and Peter and Paul and so on, so that we today have an unaltered, untainted, inerrant record of Jesus's teaching and is accurate. Do we have all Jesus taught the apostles? No way. Because over in the last chapter of John, John 21 verse 25 there, we are told that the world itself could not hold all the books needed to write down all Jesus taught and all that Jesus did. Jesus did miracles we have no idea about because they're not written down. We have all the miracles we need But friend, Jesus was just prolific in his teaching and his working. But here is what we absolutely do know, and this is critical. To be in fellowship with God, you and I must come to grips with the fact that God is utterly holy. You and I are utterly unholy. And for unholy people to have fellowship with the holy God means somehow, somehow our unholiness must be dealt with. And that, dear listener friend, is the whole point of Jesus' work when he died on the cross, the cross of Calvary and shed his blood, that we through him might be saved from our sin and be made holy, not earn holiness, not work it up, but made holy by the merits of Christ and the work of Christ. Has that happened in your life? Have you been made holy in God's sight? You can't do it on your own. Religiosity won't make you holy. Giving money to the church won't make you holy. Getting baptized or taking communion won't make you holy. Only by receiving Christ as your Savior coming to grips with your utter sinfulness and your need to be cleansed by the blood of Christ. If you've never received him as your Savior, do it now. Today, today is the day of salvation. That's what Jesus said. Receive him as your Savior now. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Track Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309 309- 828-6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website, Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.